Today we're going to be looking at some of our major muscle groups. The anterior part of the body, as you see, of course, the head and neck. In the front, you can see your uh, thoracic muscles, your pectoral, pectorals, major, and then minor will be on this side, your abdominal muscles, triceps. These are going to be your quadriceps muscles here. And we'll go into the details on that. And I assume I said abdominal muscles. Okay, on the posterior part, again, we're just looking at the big groups here. Your trapezius, here's your triceps brachii. This is your latissimus dorsi, like your back here, your gluteal muscles, the hamstring muscles, the hamstring groups. And then here is your calf, which is going to be your gastrocnemius and soleus. Okay, muscles of the head. We're not going to go through each and every single one, but first I want to mention that the epicranius goes all the way from here down to here. So it's in the back and front. So the name of this muscle is not frontal belly. It's epicranius, the frontal belly of the epicranius. As far as muscles of facial expression, uh, we look at the epicranius, especially the frontal belly here. Uh, levator labia superioris and inferioris. Here, superioris, inferioris is um, here. Well, depressor labia inferioris. So it basically pulls the mouth up, pulls the mouth down. Now, your platysma right in here is your platysma. That also influences. Uh, facial expression, orbicularis oculi here, surrounds the eye, makes the eye movement. And this is orbicularis oris, so make a kick sound and you'll hear that is orbicularis oris you're using during that sound making procedure. Okay, muscles of mastication should be here. Okay, your mass is one of them so right here um, the temporalis is actually involved in chewing well, let me get that here we have your masseter which is right here the temporalis which comes down into here and then the buccinator so here's the word buccinator those over here these are involved in mastication or chewing also muscles involved in eating and swallowing that are not mentioned uh, are the ones that move the tongue and just glenogenioglossus and hyoglossus and swallowing superhyoid and interhyoid. But we don't have those pictured right here, so we're not going to worry about those right now. Okay, these are your abdominal muscles. And first off, you need to look at the way this is. This is the exterior part. This is this is exterior part. This has been dissected way. We should have an identical picture here, all the way across here. This all the way across here, but they've dissected it out for you to look at. So uh, on the very external part, you have your external oblique. It's also known as external abdominal oblique. And it would be also on the other side as well. Uh, and it goes obliquely across it this direction. Internal oblique is just inside of that. It goes across this way. Transversus abdominis is very interior and it goes across this way. Now up and down muscle rectus means basically up and down along a plane. So this is your rectus abdominis. You have another one and this is the outline here but it's covered up and there is some variation here in exactly how this works. I've seen patients, uh, you open up for surgery, that have uh, transversus abdominis, goes all the way to the linea alba, some that it even crosses, some that it ends here like this is pictured. Same thing for the external oblique. But generally speaking, these theoretically should all meet here at the linea alba, which means white line. Actually, it means line white. Linea is line and alba is white. 
so there now everybody knows we love six-pack abs we all have them see these tennis intersections these are the intersections in the rectus abdominis and of course you have them on both sides but they've cut these away so we do have six-pack abs we just some of us keep them somewhat hidden and here are your serratus anteriors here okay and i guess the only thing i did not say is they're sure they're showing that the external oblique here ends rather than in a tendon an actual aponeurosis which is like a long sheet like tendon. and in this particular model here the transversus abdominis does as well okay the muscles of our chest uh, we have the, this is the anterior portion of the sternocleidomastoid. Here are our deltoid muscles here in the arm. Uh, this is the pectoralis major. The little small here are pectoralis minor, caracobrachialis here, uh, biceps brachii here. And then if you look at these, serratus anterior, if you take a deep breath, these will contract and pull your ribs up. Whereas your diaphragm, when it contracts, it pulls down and both together, they increase the size of your chest cavity. Okay, now you may have dissected cats in another class or in high school, and you'll, you will notice that they're not built like a human. A human stands upright, the cat is different. The pectoralis major, covers the whole anterior where in cats you dissected the major and minor the minor would bend down here but it's on the opposite side in the human okay on our back we have a few things to look at trapezius here triangular and of course it went all the way you know up all side as well okay here's our deltoid and latissimus dorsi right here latissimus dorsi deltoid okay um this is levator scapulae. think about you're levitating the scapula here's your scapula here so that's levator scapulae this is rhomboid minor this is rhomboid major this is teres uh, major teres minor infraspinatus and supraspinatus now when we're looking at the muscles that make up the um, rotator cuff it's actually made up of the supraspinatus here the infraspinatus here teres minor here and then there's an anterior muscle, which I hope is on the next picture. No, it may have been on the last picture. Let's try this. Um, don't see it right off. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, subscapularis. It's just hard to see right under the scapula here. Subscapularis here. So it's right in here. So you got four muscles subscapularis supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor that make up the rotator cuff. And those stabilize the shoulder. When people say they have a rotator cuff tear, one or all these muscles have become torn. Okay, I think we've already mentioned the thesius, latissimus dorsi, deltoid, uh, you might want to take a close look at this because this is a frequent target for your injections. Okay, on the front, we have a picture of our deltoid, pectoralis major, little bitty thing here, caracobrachialis. They're showing the triceps, but that's from the back part, and we'll look at it. We'll have to look at it from another angle. But this is the biceps brachii brachialis is under here brachoradialis is down here okay this is showing a 
cut version here. You can see the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major, and this is your triceps. You have a lateral head and a long head showing nicely right here. And then this is dorsi. All right. So triceps is the posterior part. If you want to flex your arm, your uh, elbow, you'd have to use your biceps. If you want to extend it, you'll use your triceps. Okay, we're not going to go into a tremendous amount of detail on these hands, but I will mention a couple of them. This is brachioradialis. These are your flexor muscles over that flex your carpus and your digits. Okay, they've gone deeper here. Uh, flexor digitorum superficialis. That's all I'm going to do on those. Okay, these are, this might be important. This is your a gamer muscle, your thenar muscles right there. So when you're doing your video games, you're playing with that one. Okay, these are your extensor muscles, extensor carpi ulnaris. Uh, anyway, on the back, these are all extensor muscles. And they've cut down deep, deeper and if you have to go if you go to a more detailed anatomy class you'll have to look at each of these like interossei extensor indicus take a note of what it does it goes right here and goes to your index finger uh, and here you have a supinator i'm not going to go into detail on these Okay, we will go into a little more detail here. This is the iliopsoas right in this area, and it is made out of the psoas major here and the ilicus. So iliopsoas right through here. Okay, as far as the next muscle here we're looking at, this is your tensor fascia lati. It ends up with a of fascia on the outside. We have pectineus, which is adductor longus. Think of pulling it towards you. Addu adductor magnus here. Gracilis here. So these are all the these are muscles of adduction. Now the big one that we talk about is our quadriceps group quad means four here so this is vastus lateralis on the lateral side vastus medialis right here this is the rectus femoris here and this is your sartorius it goes across this way now it, again if you've dissected cats before you no doubt noticed that the sartorius actually covers the entire medial aspect of the leg. It does not in the human. It is simply a strap here. So your quads include your sartorius here, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, and vastus medialis. Iliopsoas is here. You have your adductor muscles. Oh, pectineus, I forgot that one. Adductor longus, adductor magnus, and gracilis here. Okay, and this shows a dissected out portion where they show the adductor magnus in more detail and adductor longus. Okay, these are your gluteal muscles right in here. Gluteus medius is this little one right here. Gluteus maximus. You learned that one. And you giggled about it when you were in grade school. So you should not get that one wrong. I've had people miss gluteus maximus. Now, again, if you have dissected cats, you may have found these muscles are very different on the human than on the cat. It's to do with the position. In the cat, you'll find your gluteus medius is actually the larger of the two. But this is a human, and we sit on our gluteus maximus quite frequently. Therefore, it's a nice big muscle. They help you stand up, get up, etc. 
Okay, now we've got a few others we need to look at. Okay, down here we talked about, okay, from the gluteus maximus, it comes down here into the iliotibial tract here. On the medial aspect, we have our gracilis here, and on the hamstring muscles consist of the biceps femoris and semimembranosus and semitendinosus. Now, to remember that, the biceps femoris is the most lateral of these muscles. It's also the largest of these hamstrings. And then you have your semitendinosus, uh, semimembranosus here, semitendinosus is on this side. So the medial of these two muscles is a membranosus. Membranosus is more medial, tendinosus is closer to the biceps femoris. And don't forget, you've got your little Gracilis here, your little adductor magnus here. Okay, only ones I really asked you much about or talked too much to you about on these, we do have on the anterior part of our tibia, we have one that is conveniently called tibialis anterior, and this is extensor digitorum longus. Um, not going to look at this page much, I'm going to look right here. This is your gastrocnemius. It goes down into your calcanean tendon and inserts on your calcaneus. So from this angle, you can see your gastrocnemius it has a medial head and a lateral head. They both continue on into the calcanean tendon, also known as your Achilles tendon, and they insert here on the calcaneus. So be sure you realize it goes the complete back of your calf muscle is gastrocnemius. Now, your soleus, this has been dissected out. If you pulled your gastroc down, your soleus is underneath it. So if I were drawing a picture, say this is the anterior part of the person and that's the posterior part, I would draw the gastrocnemius as a big belly muscle here. And then the soleus is actually underneath it. Not much of a picture, but it will have to do. So look at these one more time. One more time. There we go. Okay. Gastrocnemius is the most exterior of these calf muscles going into the calcanean tendon. And then as you dissect down, you have your soleus. If you have well-developed muscles, you may be able to fill both. You should be able to fill the gastrocnemius, both bellies, by raising your toes up. But if you have well-developed muscles, you will be able to fill the gastrocnemius here and then the soleus just underneath it. Okay, that's all I've got on this for today. Thank you, and talk to you about some other chapters soon.